Hello and welcome to another out of spec motoring <laughs> video. Zach, what are you doing here in the middle of Grand Junction? We're on the race to Fort Collins. So oh, we wow. uh, we did a trip out here first. <laughs> And look at the last video. Please. Yeah, take a look at the last video. And we learned about the trucks, how they drive, how long they road trip, because this is both our first time road tripping these with a trailer. So what we're going to be doing is going here from Grand Junction. It's 7.05 at night. We're going to be leaving in the next like five to 10 minutes. We've got miles to go. Yeah. Is about three full charges with a trailer. <laughs> Don't <laughs> so say it. It's going to be an interesting thing. Over the Rocky Mountains, some outlets only do one hill on the Rockies. No, we're, we're doing the entire the whole thing. <laughs> uh, no, here's the thing. Uh, we took a like sort of learner experience coming out yeah. here. We overcharged, we learned our trucks, learned the infrastructure, and now we decided to full charge both of these. This is up to 99%. It's Painstakingly slow. This is up to 100%. And basically, our friend Ryan just rolled up in his Rivian. Take a look over here. He's towing, moving across the country. Ironically. You see that? So we have three electric trucks with trailers. Just happens. I love it. Ryan pulled up at 0%, which is amazing. Yeah. And um, now we are heading back to Fort Collins. Ryan's actually staying the night with us, so he's coming too. There you go. He's not going to be a part of the race because yeah. he's at 19%. We got to go. We can't go. We yeah, can't we, wait. We, we got a lot of filming to do. So get ready for Rivian versus F-150 Lightning road trip race with a trailer and some real crappy infrastructure. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Want to know the secret to the daily uploads? Athletic Greens. This is a daily shake that is made right here in this bottle. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals. I've been taking it for six months now. Tastes amazing and uh, totally improves my mood. You guys see I'm happier on camera. And uh, of course, just my overall wellness has just been massively boosted thanks to Athletic Greens. AG1 provides 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's a superfood drink that is incredibly convenient. Just one scoop, one minute, once a day, every day. I love how easy it is and all the benefits that come with drinking it every day. And did I mention it actually tastes great? Tap my link in the description below to get a year free of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs included with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your health. Hey, so let me explain some of the testing procedures yep. and how we're planning on doing this. So the Rivian's at a full 100% state of charge. It's already learned how much range it thinks it has. So let me take a look. It is predicting 142 miles on a full charge with this trailer, which isn't bad. Yeah, I think, let me see what the F1's at at 99. What was that? We did go downhill a little bit. 166. Away, and this is predicting 166 miles. One thing we learned on the way out here was the F-150 is actually the more efficient tower. Who would have thought? And it's a bigger truck. Way bigger. So a lot of people say, hey, these two don't compete. This is a mid-size-ish. This is a full-size truck. I would say people are cross-shopping these things left and right. Their capabilities are full are full-size trucks. I totally agree. This has more capability. This has more paper. capability than this. Yep. Yeah. But we found this to be an arguably more efficient tower. Yeah. And with better thermal management. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I suggest watching that first because we're taking all of our learnings mm -hmm. and we're going to try and optimize the trucks. <laughs> try. We figured out how to navigate parking lots with trailers. Yep, got that down. The butt. Yeah. Ryan obviously has not figured this <laughs> no, out. No, he has not. He just rolled up though. Notice he, the F-150. <laughs> he was kind of dead pulling it. Yeah. So he had to get to a charger. But uh, you have the perfect parking spot. Yeah, this spot. is great. And be here all night. <laughs> the F-150 takes an hour to go from 90 to 100%. We've been here two hours to go from 4% to 100. It's all, it's insane i would have plugged at 80 percent. it was 40 minutes ago right well on a trip you wouldn't do it but i just thought hey it'd be fair if we left full we have to leave full so we're doing yeah. it for you guys for the video our route today is going on i-70 all the way to denver then we turn north up i-25 till we get back to the office yep we can pull into the office dead because we got chargers yeah that's uh, the plan so that's our plan we're basically going to see who can get there first no more than five miles an hour over the speed limit yep. at any opportunity or any point and we're just gonna any chargers go doesn't have to be EA. Doesn't have to be EA. EA yeah. Actually, maybe best if not at that Glenwood charge. Yeah. Because there's, there's just one of four available. There's some problems. But the good thing is we, on the way down here, we figured all that out, right? We know what chargers to miss, what kind of things to like watch for at the chargers. So I think we have a good solid base. This stretch start. has just not been good for any charging infrastructure today. It's and we have 
a long ways to go to yeah, get home. Because on our race to Vegas video, we didn't we had the opposite. We had with a this wonderful stretch. experience. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So things can change very quickly. Anyway, let's uh jump in our trucks as soon as you complete your at 99%. We're gonna head to Fort Collins and then you'll meet us there later on. <laughs> see ya, we'll see you at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of Grand Junction. <laughs> All right, so I am not waiting anymore until 100%. I'm leaving at 99. I can't wait anymore. This truck is painstakingly slow to 100. So the plan now is to unplug the F-150, hit the road at 99%, because, hey, that's just as good as 100. What is one extra percent really going to make? And it was like half a kilowatt hour that we needed. So we're going to let our buddy pull in over here. Kyle, we're going to hit the road. You ready? Let's start the race. All right, we are charged up to 100% state of charge and 142 miles of range. That's what towing will do. And this is like a super aerodynamic load as well. If I go here to cameras, it's pretty much just an open trailer with a tote on the back. Um, let's see, we want to win the race. So where are we going to go? I'd like to see if we can get in front of Zach. Oh, he's already going. What the heck? Okay, well, if you're going, then... <laughs> don't hit my truck um then we should go because i'll explain on the road our strategy but i can't wait anymore we gotta get the heck out of here into drive we go i'm gonna take i'm going this way he's going that way um i am going to go out the front entrance and onto the highway here comes an id4 good luck charging with ryan blocking everything no I'm joking oh that's the same guy we saw earlier have a good trip yeah good, yep. good, good to see you we'll see you later on take care one of our viewers great great to know so many ev owners in colorado and we've been able to see them all day today so 7 14 p.m we're heading to the office in fort collins colorado over the entire rocky mountains and uh, we're leaving full so let's do this thing oh let me reset my trip calculations because we got to go uphill the first bit of this trip is going to be brutal and then we can hammer it the second half as we lose all the elevation 307 <laughs> miles is gonna be a rough night oh my god that's without charging dude so it's it's, it's 2 a.m yeah that's my prediction and at least these seats fold down so i can take a nice nap yeah good for you <laughs> but if you need me to drive i have no issue with it yeah we might i, I think we might tap you in that's fine time. I already did the whole drive here. Oh, darn it. I guess we can't get out that way. You could have, you but could have. we already went this way. All right, whatever. It's not like we're in a race or anything. Yeah. 167 miles of range, by the way, at 99%. Yeah, but we've also been going downhill the last um, two hours. Simon has little faith in the F1 for this one. So I'm just going to give you a quick tidbit. If you haven't watched the previous video, I highly recommend you do pretty boring but it gives you an idea of what we're up against today the big charger from here the next one up and it's all uphill is glenwood springs colorado it's about 85 miles of just up and i think that's going to be almost a full charge in this thing problem is there's only one working dc fast charger and it's 150 kilowatt unit might be a 350 i'm not sure the thing is if zach beats me there um, we will be screwed because we would have to wait for him to finish charging. There is a charger in between here and there in Rifle, Colorado, but it's just a charge point one that's only maximum 80 kilowatts to the Rivian. So we really need to get out on the road. We need to get in front of him and I want to get to that only working charger. The problem is we've seen a million electric vehicles on the road today and there's just been lines at chargers and stuff like this. So with more adoption and one working charger on a very important route, or I should say one high speed working charger, it's very difficult to get uh, into that spot. So that's my plan. We'll figure out as we go, I'll use the Electrify America app to see what's plugged in, what's not. If it's available, I think we stretch it to Glenwood Springs, charge up enough, get to Frisco, or Edwards. I'm not sure yet. Edwards probably has more space. The problem is Frisco is really tight. It's in that Walmart parking lot and we got to squeeze through everything. But if we're there late in life enough, then it will work. We got a lot that we got to figure out because not only do we have to balance charging, we need to balance space for the trailer. And I don't want to unhook this thing by myself. So I got air conditioning off. I'm going to run it, but uh, it's a race. So I can pull out all the stops. I got my tonneau cover closed. Not that it makes much of a difference. And I can accelerate pretty quickly up to the speed I need to get to, which is 50 miles an hour on this road. So let's freaking do this. Speed limit's 45. So I can go 55 over right there. And the Rivian actually reads a little bit under what we're doing. So 73 miles an hour indicated is actually 70 GPS. And so let's head over towards the highway put in Glenwood Springs here before I miss my turn 
and uh, yeah, head on out of town. So it's 90 miles to the Glenwood Springs Charger and we have 136 miles on the Gesso Meter. The problem is that was downhill from the Charger. We're going uphill. So we know we're gonna get less than that. How much less, I'm not sure. But I think since we're in front of Zach, I can see him back there a few lights. We are going to shoot for that Glenwood Springs Charger. Come on, Rivian. The F-150 is more efficient and has better thermal management for charging, but I think I can optimize this thing to get us there faster. At least I hope. So we've got an update. We just got on the highway where me and Timon are kind of thinking, is it going to be faster to go slower and more efficient go or go faster and burn through the juice more? Because we have pretty much a dead-end charger that we have to go to in Glenwood, uh, which is only one charger available, and we need to be Kyle there. Kyle knows that. But also, I don't want to burn up too much juice because I really don't want to stop at the cup and go either. Yeah, because that's slow. I think we take the risk waiting at the Glenwood Charger because the come and go is going to be slower anyway. So if he takes the come and go charger, then that gives us a head start Yeah, for farther up. And the come and go charger is slower than... But didn't you say the come and go is only like 30 minutes from here? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Kyle's going to take that. Yeah, I don't think so either. He's at 100%. Yeah, he's at 100 just like us. So he's going to go... He's probably got the same mindset as us. It's like, drain this. And then figure out where you're going to be at that Yeah, point. but he's doing about the same speed. He's not pulling he's not away pulling from on. us. So I'll go 73. See if we can kind of draft behind him, maybe. Yeah, I, maybe that will work. I doubt it, though. Yeah. <laughs> These trucks are bricks in the way. Though. Yeah. We are going five over indicated, but I just checked. I can actually go up to 78 miles an hour indicated to technically be within the rules here of five miles an hour GPS over. Uh, the Rivian is preconditioning the battery for fast charging. I have noticed on the newer software updates, less thermal issues when charging, but certainly when you're ripping on it with towing and then you plug it into a DC fast charger down low, it definitely has some derating due to temperature in the battery pack would be my guess. Definitely some weird things going on here. So the Lightning uh, has the extra max trailer tow pack with the uh, secondary air compressor, air, air conditioning loop, and that makes all the difference in the world. That truck has had no issues at all. So it sounds like Ford really fixed their thermal issues and Rivian's got to work on them. Oh man, I knew the Rivian was going to recalculate quick our new Gesso meter going uphill, but I didn't think it was going to recalculate this quick. Uh, showing 90 miles of predicted range and 84 left to go to the charger. So we basically just lost 40 miles of range just by going in the other direction. Yikes! We may not even make it at high speed to Glenwood Springs. We could either play the slow game and kind of stretch it up there, which is what I think I might do, or we can bail out in rifle, which is 20 miles less. But this is definitely predicting well under 100 miles of range with this trailer at highway speed. So I'm really curious as to what Zach and Timon are gonna do. We've even found that the Lightning with two people inside of it's even more efficient than the Rivian. So Timon was switching back and forth and maybe today he will as well as just to try and even it out. But the extra person in the Lightning is not gonna really affect the results today. It's all about aero and drivetrain efficiency, not so much about the payload. So we just got off the phone with Kyle Connor and uh, I don't think he's gonna make it to Glenwood. He's yeah, gonna... he said his predicted range is about 80 miles That's and he's insane. got 89 miles to go. Yeah, and we got 143 predicted range. Uh, and we were trying to get to this place that's 120 miles away, but I don't think we're gonna do that either, um, just because of the elevation gains and all that fun stuff. So I think the play is gonna be, we're gonna stop back at that, we're gonna stop back at the come and go that we stopped on the way here, which was in a previous video, uh, but that's the play. We're gonna stop there, charge up a bit, and then try to go to Edwards. I wanna get just enough juice to make it to Edwards and then do a, a good charge in Edwards and then try to push it all the way home from there if that's possible. I think it is, because uh, Kyle said after Frisco, it's all downhill. Yeah. With a trailer, so that's extra juice in the battery. Yeah, and I think we can do that. I, I have more faith in this truck uh, going longer distances like that than Kyle's truck. And I think Kyle's gonna run into thermal stuff going up these hills. Yeah, I mean, it has cooled down a significant, it's 66 outside currently. Yeah. It was when we left Fort Collins this morning or left Loveland, yeah. it was in the high 80s at least. Yeah, it was hot, I was sweating. 
Yeah, I was freezing when we were outside. Yeah, it was cold. It, Grand Junction was windy, and on the way here, we hit like the most insane weather. So yeah, I think that's the play. Frisco, come and go, and then, uh, or it's not Frisco, it's Eagle or yeah. something like that. Um, and then stop there, charge on the CPE charge point, yeah, 125 kilowatt units, and charge up there as much as we can, and then go to Edwards, charge up there deep, because uh, we're skipping Glenwood Springs because we don't want to try to deal with it because they only have one working charger right now and you can't depend on that. So that's the play. I think we're timing. Uh, I think it's pretty solid. Yeah, so let's hit it and we'll see y'all at the coming go. So we are about 20% into the drive on the way to Glenwood Springs and I think the guesso meter is leveled out on the Rivian pretty well. And um, yeah, so this is all about a race, right? Which is a game of maximizing the truck's capabilities and a game of maximizing the charging infrastructure's capabilities. The problem with Glenwood Springs is only one of the four Electrify America chargers works. The three of them completely offline won't be able to charge. I'm ahead of Zach. I think I am going to try and stay ahead of him as long as I don't dip below five miles an hour over. It does mean taking corners kind of quickly with this trailer, but maybe worth it. Uh, I think I can get to that charger first and zap up. Now, if he takes a different approach, I think it's going to slow him down because that's the only high power charger. The next highest power charger in the area would only give that lightning about 75 kilowatts and that would be pulling in in rifle if he goes past glenwood springs there was only 50 kilowatt chargers so i'm just hoping i can get to that charger in glenwood springs i think it's a 350 kilowatt which will max the rivian out at around 200 kilowatts unless it's an abb charger i don't know i have to look i think it is i think it's software limited too so we might get only about 160 kilowatts 150 at best still better than 75 kilowatts that we would get or 80 kilowatts in this that we would get at um, uh, rifle but but I seem to think so it's 62 miles to get there and I have 76 miles of projected range and I've been kind of holding it steady at five over I think we can make it there and I think if we make it there first that's the best chance we have because if you were to run them on the same infrastructure side by side I think the lightning would win um, and that's a shock for me to say that and we learned that today but that thing is efficient with a trailer and it charges pretty well actually it's not crazy fast no big peaks but it holds steady to 80 percent something we can't say about this rivian so um, if we can hit that glenwood charger that's our only hope of winning this thing otherwise i think we just gotta bow out now so glenwood is the make or break for us and you can see here, 75 miles of projected range, 61 miles to get there. It is preconditioning. I know that uses a little bit extra energy, but I'm okay with it because I want the best possible charging curve. Um, temperatures are down, which is great for us. There are 64 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're just going to have to keep maintaining speed around these corners. Whoa. <laughs> so let's keep doing this, and let's stay in front. Hey now. Hey now, we're making hey a pass. Now. Doing the go. speed limit. Ha ha. America. Yep, 75. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go faster than 75. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Well, I don't really feel comfortable going that fast with the trailer, so. I guess I will be the safe one and stay back here. Zach's a little bit wilder than me, I guess. Uh, what happened was is I did one hard acceleration on the way out and it shifted my tote back. So my weight balance isn't terrible, but it's not where I want it to be. So I'm just being a little extra cautious because there's no way for me to shift the tote without dumping the water and finding another place to fill. So this is about as good as it's gonna get for me right now. Just a beautiful view as we're starting to come out of this rainstorm. You can see the sun shining through just off in the distance. I can see the lightning just went around the corner. All right, time in. We're pulling off at the come and go where we uh, stopped on the way here uh, just because we got to get to Edwards. So the plan is we're going to add, uh, me and time and agree that we want a, about a 40 mile buffer. We have a 10 mile buffer right now, so we'll have a 50 mile buffer. So we want to add another 40 miles because the next stretch all the way to Edwards is uphill. Uh, yeah, I think it's a safer bet to where we can still go the speed limit. Um, yeah. and, I want to put miles under us. And I sure. think as long as if Kyle stops here, we'll be able to 
because he'll plug in after us. And then if, as long as we unplug and out of the parking lot before he unplugs, we're still ahead of him. Yeah, because we're, our plan is to higher speeds because Kyle can't really do the higher speeds uh, um, because of the way his load is distributed slash the thermaling on the Rivian. He doesn't want to overheat it again. Um, so we're going to try to take advantage of that and we're going to plug in here and start charging and 18 wheeler's still there dude that was the yeah. one we got here um just taking a nice nap take the first one i guess huh yeah and then let kyle deal with the other ones if he so needs to oh i'm just gonna pull in like this right bud yeah it looks good bud that looks pretty good oh yeah we really need a scoot as far forward as we can okay <laughs> Run! All right, all right. Run! Run! Oh, race. I forgot about that part. Hey. Wow, that's a quick handshake. Yeah. See some big speeds. Come on. All right, so we're at 56%, an hour and 17 minutes remaining. 28. Oh, God. That's fine. He's warming up. 133. Come on, 40. 50. Anything over 50 is fine. 60. 60. 70, 71, that's where it's gonna be. That's where we were on the way here. Yep, that's it. So let's look, at 40 miles we're leaving. Cool. So I talked to Zach and Timon, they said they're going to rifle, which I'm thinking we go to Glenwood Springs. I got enough charge, we got about 20 miles of buffer on the predicted range. Um, and so we're going to Glenwood Springs. Now the big question is, did they lie and try and fool me into going to Glenwood Springs and they'll be there? I don't know, but either way, we're gonna risk it. Hope that they were being truthful going to rifle. I never said I was, and let's go to Glenwood Springs. Fingers crossed they didn't pull one on me. All right, let's roll. Run, run, run. run. Ah, ah, God damn it, Kyle <laughs> tricked us, by the way, everyone. So yeah, so Kyle called us a couple times and was like, hey, are y'all going to Glenwood? Are you sure? Yeah, you should probably pull in at the other one because, uh, uh, you want to charge it? He was throwing all these nerd terms at me that really threw me off. You know, low voltage packs and all this other stuff I don't understand, amperages and things. <laughs> so then I was like, yeah, I guess we should stop at the come and go, you know, and not risk Edwards uh, or Glenwood Springs. But you know what? We How long were we there, Timon? Maybe 10 minutes? Yeah. We're at 102 miles of predicted range. We have 73 miles to go to Edwards. So, can we make it? We'll find out. We'll find out. We couldn't. We can't wait at that one any longer. We needed that to be as quick as possible, and it was. We literally went inside, went to the bathroom, came back out, and left. Basically. Yep, basically. You know, maybe five extra minutes in there. So, I would say we were there probably 15 minutes. Yeah. Which is, sucks, because Kyle passed us, but he's not even at Glenwood Springs yet. Yeah, it still shows, uh, on the app, it still shows one available, so... I'm guessing he's going to plug in. It's going to show zero or someone else plugged in, and then it'll give us a call. Yeah, because if Kyle plugs in, all right, time. What do you think on our speed? You I say five under. I say seventy. Yeah, let's go five under. So, so we'll go seventy instead of seventy-five. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll keep an eye on our buffer. And if it looks like we're make we're gaining buffer, then we'll start adding speed on. Yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah. Such a dramatic view pulling into Glenwood Springs, isn't it? Just the fog, the rain, it's all crazy out here. We have eight miles to our destination, 35 miles of predicted range. The Rivian definitely is conservative, especially when you start out a trip, as it should. The F-150 definitely seems to be probably more accurate in its range estimation, but might be a bit optimistic. So, I don't know, different approaches. I think uh, both both work as long as you know how they're operating. Man, can't get over this view though. We are so lucky. I always say this when coming through here, but we are so lucky to live in this beautiful place. This is just, wow, with the river and the clouds. Oh my goodness. This is just so magical. It is so cool out here. Hey there. Hey, let me make sure you're not going to Glenwood so I can have it all for myself, Kyle Connor. Uh, well, you see what happened was I actually did not intend to do that. I was on the phone and totally blew past the exit. 
<laughs> That's usual. Oh no, are you going to be able to make it? Uh, so that was the other side of things. I wasn't looking for the exit because I wasn't planning on going there anyway. Uh-huh. Because I prefer to get to Glenwood, yes. But I didn't think when we were on the phone last, my strategy was to go to Rifle. But now the Rivians recalculated in my favor and I'll have about 30 miles of buffer going into Glenwood. Dang. Nice. It's a thing so conservative uh, when you first start out. Yeah, we stopped at, we were already back on the road from our charging stop. And, wow, uh, that's fast. We, we just added 40 miles, basically, and just bounced. So that so gives us... To Edwards? Yeah, that we're heading to Edwards. That gives us uh, maybe like a 35-mile buffer right now. Well, it's very possible you could still be in the lead. Who knows? But we're also... Your truck's, your truck's more efficient and... You're definitely driving faster than I am. Uh, we, I've been going real slow. We cranked it down to 70, actually, for this stretch, just to guard our buffer a bit. Yeah, I was just worried about the road conditions, so I just went a little bit slower. Yeah, it's definitely not the most favorable road conditions at all. Yeah, but the sky is insane. Driving into Glenwood, I'm looking at this fog through the mountains. It's, it's wonderful. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think you're, yeah. what, like 10 miles ahead of us or something? Yeah, 15 miles. I think... Yeah, okay. I mean, so basically, I'm 15 minutes to charge up. So here we are pulling up to the Glenwood Charger with battery in red, 30 miles of range. That's plenty of range. Let's see who is at the Charger. I did check just a minute ago, and it said it was available. So let's hope no one came in. Again, only one working Charger. It is a 350 kilowatt Charger, but I think limited to 350 amps, which doesn't make really any difference for me uh, versus a 150 in this truck. So pulling in, trailer's a little clunky. We're trying to be quick about this because Zach and Timon have already left. And this is the only working one. Yeah, that charger doesn't work. Unavailable. That one's dead and that one's dead. So here we go. Pulling in. Get it real close so the trailer's not blocking anyone. Let me activate the charger. Let's get it plugged in. Oh, yes. We made it. The plan worked. It was a little bit of me not paying attention while driving and probably still doing this anyway. It's. I'm glad we made it here. I don't know what our state of charge is. Go on. Nice. And wow, the weather, the sky, it feels like Jurassic Park out here. Just insane. Oh my goodness, the load, definitely a little bit too far back for my liking, if I'm honest. I really, so when I put it on the trailer, it was up here, I must have done a terrible job strapping it down. It hasn't moved since that one initial thing, and man, the straps are really tight. So tight, we're actually damaging our tote a little bit here. Ah, oh, that kind of sucks, but man. I did not strap that down so well. Anyway, we are charging. Hell yeah. And let's take a look at the stats. We're at 32% state of charge. Doing a over 150 kilowatts, 160, 170, 180, 190. Whoa, this is not a limitation at this charger then. This thing's given us pretty much everything. Full 500 amps. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if I go here and this, so we drove 90 miles at 1.09 miles per kilowatt hour. We used 83 kilowatt hours to get here. So basically a Model Y could not do that trip. Good thing this, this thing has the 135 kilowatt hour pack in it. Well, there we go. Good news. We're gonna charge here until it tapers and we'll see which one we can make it to. Dang, this thing is ripping, but it's definitely a little bit unstable. So it like is going up to 215 kilowatts, then down to 190, and it's doing this wave thing. And I think it's temperature related. Let's turn off climate control and see if we can divert more to the battery pack. You can see 180 kilowatts, and then it'll shoot right back up. But uh, still going to be riding this charging. Limited by charging station. I wonder if that's the case. Huh. I don't think it is. So... The truck thinks the charging station is slowing it down. What does this say? The maximum power of this charger has been temporarily reduced to zero based off of that screen right there. Okay. Um, let's just take a look at the other stations because maybe it's not that big of an issue. To be fair, when they said it was offline earlier today, I didn't actually go and 
physically look at each charger to check, but all of them in the app show offline except for that one. So you wouldn't be able to even activate them if you tried. This one, dead. And that one not even lights on, like, like man, the power just went off on that one. This is crazy. How can you have four charging stations, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment? This whole station might be a million bucks for what I did for, you know, maybe, I don't know. And you just have one charger working and it's on one of the most important corridors across Colorado. And it's like people tow now. We just ran into Ryan towing. We have a lot of our viewers messaging us today. Hey, I'm towing with this, towing with that. We had uh, some viewers message us today. They're towing with their lightning and they were only getting 35 kilowatts, which is an issue we ran into earlier today with uh, the lightning test vehicle that we have. Man, we have a lot of work to do before this infrastructure really works. I will say though, I am just digging the way the Rivian tows. I'm loving the way it looks, loving the truck. I just, um, you know, I'll tow long distances because I can make YouTube videos about it and share the story with you guys and it's worth it to me. I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes as maybe non-YouTubers who don't enjoy spending your life at charging stations, how this could be even measurably better than combustion and we are so far away from, from this use case working here. And this is a tiny, tiny trailer. This is nothing. You know, this truck can tow more than double of this in terms of weight and certainly a much larger trailer from an aero standpoint. So this is like baby steps here and it's struggling. My goodness. Guess there's no way around physics, is there? So we'll continue charging up until maybe 60 or 70%. I'm thinking we either do Edwards or Frisco, I'm not sure. And then uh, maybe one more stop to get home. So I think we'll probably have two more stops till we're home. So Kyle's at that target over there. We're just now passing him. First place. Back in first place. Feels great. If you're not first, you're last, baby. Amen, brother. Amen. Okay, we're at 65%, 50 miles to go. I think that leaves us enough buffer. My biggest concern is if there are any hill climbs because I don't have any of my elevation profiles with me. It's hard. We need like mapping with built-in elevation. Um, it's hard to know exactly where we're going to do it. And I don't want to hit a hill climb at low state of charge. You know me, normally I'm pulling in dead, but it's not good for an electric car to go under full load when you're almost out. The EA charger's bricks, so I can't stop charging. Ah, I gotta go here and then hit the lightning bolt and then hit stop charge. And I did that all before the screen even came off of that one. We're unplugged. It still thinks we're charging. Why does that suck so much? Oh my God. <laughs> it's maybe we just bricked that charger. I have no idea. Nope, there we go. Thank you, Kyle. You're welcome. No time to chat about it. $16 into reverse. Let's go. Everyone's out of our way, I hope. Let's not jackknife the trailer. And we'll back out the back way, which is this way. All right, off we go then on the race to home. Get out of the way, truck. Did he just beach himself right there? What the heck? I guess we'll just scooch around him. What's funny is the AC compressor is buzzing so loud, it's rattling the whole dashboard. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Only 0.3 miles so we can merge back on the highway. And everyone's going two miles an hour. We can go five over. We're not even doing it. Let's go. Here we go. Merging back on the highway. Motors are sounding good. Let's get ourselves all situated up here. And we have 63 miles of projected range, 49 miles to go. Plenty of buffer. If we have a big elevation climb and feeling good about it let's rock and roll all right time in we just hit our low battery warning at 29 miles of range six and a half miles to our projected arrival so more than enough to get us there uh we're actually cruising at the speed limit now at 75 trying to just burn up a little bit of our buffer um and try to put a little distance between kyle because he's about what'd you say kyle 14 15 miles behind us currently yeah so we're trying to put a little distance. we might see him at this charger actually because i have the rivian app and his location and he left glenwood springs with uh 61 miles yeah. of he, range he's been saying that the rivian's been very conservative in its judgment but We've also done the exact same stretch, and there's a we're, we're, we've been climbing for the last yeah, like we've, three or four miles. Yeah, we've gained about a thousand feet of elevation. Yeah, is it if this first one's 350? It'd be awesome. Um, I can't tell. 
Nope. They're at 150. All right. Oh God, am I too close over there? I can't tell. Okay. It doesn't look like it. Just accelerate out. That's a 350. Yeah. Let's just block it. That's not, if another EV pulls up, We'll move. Yeah, we'll move. But there's four available chargers. These are brand new units, so everything it's works. It's 9.30 at night. I think yeah. we're good. Here, let me get it. You're far. good. I think you're good. All right. Well, here we go. Pulling off in Edwards, Colorado. There's the new EA station. I haven't been here yet. Looking for Zach and Tymon. Not seeing the lightning down there. Perhaps they either skip the station or maybe I'm just not seeing them. Anyway, it's right off the highway, so I figured, hey, why not just stop in and juice up a little bit? I probably could have stretched it to Frisco, but there's actually not much benefit by doing so. So I was like, well, it's literally right off the highway, so let's just loop around here and do uh, do this thing. I heard Edwards is really nice. I don't think I've actually ever checked out Edwards before. We're going to go left here, even though it says EV charging to the right. Um... I guess we're gonna go this way to pull in. I don't know, this is all new for me. Oh, we got some sprinters over here. Oh, I am loving this. I would love to live up in the mountains. Maybe we should consider something like that. There's the EA station, so let's zoom around over there. Oh, the supercharger is here, I believe. Oh, neato. F-150's out, 142, so a little bit faster than what we were doing. Been here 11 minutes, 17% to 38%. Ah, I miss my Ionic. Much better road tripper than this F-150. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going. I like these units. Oh, they're so, so much nicer. 142, not too bad. Let's see where Kyle's at. Here comes Kyle. That little trickery stop he did didn't really save him much. Probably cost him more time, actually. Hey there! Just gonna pull up right next to him then. And uh, let's see, is this the 350 kilowatt unit right here? Looking like it. Hey there! He beat me over here. He's at 40% state of charge. Dang. All right, here we go. Let's see what state of charge we're at. Do, 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 do. This one, 34. Dang, he's just ahead. Hey there! Hey there, what happened? <laughs> well, I was charging. Yeah. I, I still got 34%. Okay. Yeah, let that me didn't get... really do you much good. Yeah, it did. Let me get this thing going. It's definitely taking its time. Oh. First off, I think someone's about to crash. Nope. They pulled it out. Okay. You got a red light. Uh, red light failed on charging. So uh, let's other handle? This again. I don't really know what the heck's going on here. It's because of the rain. <laughs> right, yeah. Over. Now it's working. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, same handle. I, I knew it just felt like something. It's that last little, I don't know. that I don't lift, really know. the okay. lift. So here we go, Signet Charger. We're hoping for 500 amps, baby. 134 minutes. So mine did this. Minutes. It was a real slow ramp up. Well, all Signets ramp like this. Okay. 60, 70, 80, 90. Come on. 100. Show us the watts to freedom. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. Just another double check. It's 141, holding steady. Now we're talking. Oh no, that's so bad this, news. This, we're... this is not giving us everything the truck wants. So the chargers must not be putting out 500 amps. Are we grid limited maybe? Well, there might be a station limit for grid, but- Because you got Tesla chargers cranking over there. And... Only one car, plus it's not grid limited because I'm already adding on top of what you pulled. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean? 169, 170? 170. Well, but see, what I'm worried about is... Math real quick. Yeah, you're at 35%. We're at 47%. I might catch up to you. I think you will. But let's see, if this thing can keep cool, I might. Let's just do the math really quick. I'm guessing we're at about 430 volts. Uh, and so basically, let's do... How many kilowatts are we doing? 170 169,000 divided by 430 is 393 amps oh so it's not giving us the well, juice the truck should be asking for 500 at this state of charge yeah but it's not but or it's not getting it's getting 400 amps yeah i've never seen a 400 amp limitation what the heck and then we're stuck at 134 so we went down the notch 
Uh, let me get the phone. Let's take a look at this because we can get data on this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you're getting 130. Uh, so you're getting 353 amps. So you're getting a 350 amp limitation. Huh. So I must be as well, but my voltage is probably a bit higher. Yeah. So these do not have the new software on them. Zach, I'm I'm ready to go, sir. I'm under 100 kilowatts. There's no way I'm waiting around for this. It's yeah. downhill from Frisco. I think we're going to go to 80. We're at 76. Might as well stay for another four. All right. See you in the morning. I'm going to get a nice night's sleep when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> I know have to stop again. Uh, yeah, I will have to stop again. Stop charging. No, my money's on the board. I think you're going to have to stop again. Yeah, I do. See ya, Zach. Oh, I forgot to show you this. We just hit the road a couple seconds ago. Uh, 54 miles to get over to Edwards, 1.16 miles per kilowatt hour. That's from Glenwood Springs. So let's reset that. Come on, there we go. And now we're heading up. It is rainy, wet, dark, nasty road conditions. I'm just taking it easy to prevent hydroplaning and anything like that. But I am ahead of Zach and Timon. So a little bit of hopscotch. It's very close in terms of time of road tripping these two electric trucks. We have some really bad weather. Since Kyle showed up at the last charger, we pulled off almost at the same state of charge. And uh, we're both going to Lakewood. Kyle's able to beat us a little bit, um, but the, wet, the roads are so bad. I think we're classifying this as close enough to a tie. Yeah. Uh, we got to go 55 basically yeah with the, this trailer on the back it's kind of sketchy in this rain and you can't see there's it's really hard to see the lines yeah because there's no lines. at least it's not busy which is nice yeah but yeah. or thank god it's also not snowing yeah it's kind of hard i i think for future races we can't do them at night yeah but also no trailers no trailers yeah this is just for this test i guess yeah i mean it's Good to see, like, what would happen, which I think it'd be very close. Very close. I think it would lead to the last couple stoplights. Yeah. And which isn't, to me, isn't really a showcase of charging or the cars themselves. They're pretty much evenly matched. That's just, you know, one driver having a little bit of leverage over the other by, like, beating a light or... Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Just being, like, two miles ahead is... Because it ideally what we're showcasing is like charging time and getting out of the charger faster, efficiency. Right, the and the trailers also hinder that a lot with backing out of spots takes a little longer as well. Yeah. Well, it's hill climb time, heading up the Vale Pass, 0.76 miles per kilowatt hour, and we're just at the bottom. Trucks already have their hazards on big puddles of water on the road. You'll be cruising, and then all of a sudden this thing turns into a cruise ship plowing through it. So just gotta be careful you know, not going too fast and hydroplaning in these puddles. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, move on over and keep seeing how this thing goes. But so far, so good. 50 degrees outside and no thermal issues on the way up, that's for sure. And we have reached the top of Vail Pass with 46 miles of range projected, just under 50% state of charge. Here are our stats so far, 0.77 miles per kilowatt hour, but I believe this is the highest point of the drive today, so it's all downhill from here, quite literally. We are on the downhill section on the other side of Vail Pass, and just take a look at this chart right here. It just freaking, well, if a music thing would go away, there we go. Regen Central, baby. Getting more efficient the higher that graph goes. We are just leaving Silverthorne and now starts the official climb all the way up to the Eisenhower Tunnel. We're at 43% state of charge. You can see we've regened a ton on the way down. Efficiency off the charts. This thing is going to be slammed at the bottom by the time we're done. I'm just going to keep the speed limit set pretty much under the speed limit and we're just going to kind of crawl our way up the hill. Welcome to the Eisenhower Tunnel. We made it up to the, the top. We're at 11,000 feet Yeah, right, and right Kyle right is right in front of us. Let's catch up to him. We've almost been, almost home we've been going pretty slow i'm not gonna lie we've been going right up the speed limit or maybe five under yeah just because we of have the 40 miles conditions. 41 miles of range with 49 miles to go my left ear just popped dude finally finally been right. waiting for that oh he's there. gonna cut us off yeah now we're i think we're are we back in the race now what do you think i don't know i just feel like we're gonna both stop at the next charger yeah 
And then, like, it's not really... I think this is a tie. I think we're just going to have to count this as a draw. Because, like, it's literally... It's literally going to come down to, like, one red light. Or how hard one driver is willing to run lights or something. Yeah. Not necessarily charging speed. Not necessarily... You know, we've already discussed Well, I guess that. we'll find that out at this charger, really. If, if it's going to be charging speed or not. Or it depends on how much range we gain going down. Because what is our battery percentage at? There. You focus on driving, sir. Sounds like a plan there. Uh, 34%. No way, no. Not making it home with that. Nope. Maybe a love one, depending if we gain like mm -hmm. 45% by the down, by the... Uh, I don't, I think we just stop anyways. Yeah. I think that thing looks good. I yeah, like this white. thing looks stunning. Yeah, I really like the white. Nice thumbs up. Oh, he's launching it. Oh, there goes the tote. <laughs> <laughs> it flies off the... And we are coming down the hill where we typically film our hogback driver assistance challenges on out-of-spec reviews. Beautiful view of the city off in the distance. Just absolutely gorgeous. So lucky to live in Colorado. It is amazing. I know I keep saying it. So anyway, just regenning down the hill. We, um, yeah, have been really maximizing our range on this section and that's as expected we're down to 22 miles of predicted range only eight miles left to go so i think we timed that perfectly yeah i'm very pleased with this truck i just think um the rivian is the perfect vehicle for me it does everything i want this truck to do it's fast on a back road it's great off-road you can make it comfortable for daily driving it's the right size to squeeze through traffic and kind of put stuff in the back which is great and oh by the way it can tow this trailer without feeling like anything's back there just a perfect all-rounder in my opinion so we're taking our exit uh, midnight. yep midnight finally and when we got to the eisenhower tunnel we had about negative 10 mile buffer yeah and now we're pulling in 0. 0.8 of a mile left so we have a 39 mile buffer positive it's interesting because we gained a lot uh, obviously it's a lot of downhill but i think that's really going to help us because the weather has stopped the rain is gone we, it, it looks like we got some wind though from the trees not that you guys can see that much because yeah. it's so dark but it's definitely not the roads aren't wet over here so yeah, i think yeah. the race is back on uh i don't think it was ever not on but we're just trying to be safe uh, yeah but uh yeah i think we're in front of kyle he's behind us about a mile um so the plan here is to get we have 41 miles of range right now and i have a feeling that's going to be pretty spot on and we're at 29 percent battery so I think we need like 50%. Yeah, till tapers or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, till tapers. And I think we can make it to the office and I think, I think we can beat Kyle. All right, Kyle, what kind of speeds you pulling? And uh, charging, so it just is initiating. So let's take a look. Oh yeah, okay. All right, Kyle, what kind of speeds are we getting here? Let's take a look here. So continue, better to just look in the truck because the truck tells you without a lag. Yeah. Hold on, just give it like five minutes. Yeah. Look at the bottom of the screen's blowing out. This is why our videos are so long. We wait. Here we go. 180? I can't quite. 202. 202. Wow, 204. Nice. That's, so That's full speed? Getting the juice. Uh, full speed's like 220, but it'll, it will it needs some more pack voltage to get there. Um, fans are on, though. What's interesting is these are ABB units, but they don't seem to have a 350 amp limitation. No. So perhaps this is an issue getting fixed over time because we're getting well over 200 kilowatts right here on an ABB 350 kilowatt unit. So that's promising. That's good news. But I will say they have the old cables on them, which this, I think a lot of the limitations might be cable related. We also have limitations here for the candle. We had limitations but here. That could have been car as well. Yeah, it was really cold when we were here. Yeah. So it has been pulling just maximum speeds until we hit right around that nine to 10 minute mark. And now it's just walking itself down here, not doing any of the weird stuff we saw with the zero to 100% charging test. And my guess is it's gonna level off right in that 140 range, but this is how it should be done. What's weird is it's the same software as before, but this to me feels what 
like what the truck should be doing. And I guess it's a 10 minute peak. So this to me feels like what the truck really wants to be doing. You know, right around here, 53%, 140 kilowatts. It's all time-based. I'm pretty sure I've seen over 170 kilowatts at 53% on another charging occasion. So this is definitely a time component. Seems to be a 10 minute peak and then just walks itself down. Kind of annoying that it does that, but it's really not as bad as the Mach-E was because then it kind of sits above 120 until 80%, no matter when you plug in. So it's a totally livable charging curve. It's just not class leading. Whereas the Rivian is maxing out what a 400 volt charger can do. It just can't handle that much power from a thermal standpoint. And you can hear the fans are ripping on it and I've checked it's already overheating. So this is about where it's gonna level off, somewhere around here. Let's win this thing, dude. How many miles is it? 70 something. I can't do it. I know, I just checked the app, that's why we don't yeah, 93 miles of predicted. Well, just keep in mind, you just came down that hill. Yeah, we'll take our chances. there's also Loveland as a backup, and you're still here, so for at least 10 I would minutes. Say, I would say that certainly is uh, my prediction. No trickery. They're pretty close. But no tomfoolery. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good road trigger. Not bad. I, I would still take something that's a little more efficient. And if this could keep itself cool. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey he's trying to keep us here. <laughs> <laughs> It just bricked. No, one was unavailable. Oh, okay. Well, then one is available. Uh, let's see if I can watch that post up front corner. You're not going to be able to get out of here. You don't think so? Yeah, just listen. Keep going. Oh, oh holy smoke. <laughs> Drop. No, keep going forward. <laughs> just, just take it easy. Just, just nice and slow. Until you're, you're close, but I think you're going to get it. Keep going. Keep going. Money. Oh my god. So the trailer doesn't hit it. Yeah. Watch your trailer. Yeah, I got the trailer. We're gonna keep her turned. Straighten her out. We're out of here. Floor it. No, I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> right, home baby. Well, we are charged up to 71% state of charge. It's 71 miles to get there. I know I can get at least 100 miles on a full charge. So that to me sounds like we're good to go with a little bit of extra buffer so we don't run it all the way out. And um, great, we're here 29 minutes, 20 bucks to charge it up. All sounds good to me, but 64 kilowatts, holy. Let's get the heck out of here. What is going on with this truck? The truck, the chargers. <laughs> and this handle doesn't even hold the charger. Look, it's all broken. What the heck? I don't want to leave it on the ground. I have no other option but to leave this on the ground because the holster is broken. Wow. So I'll just place that gently there. But look, the whole holster. I have no nowhere else to put it. Unless I put it up here. This might be a little bit better so no one runs it over. I think I'll place it right there yeah that's probably safer for it and it has been a super uneventful drive on the way up here just the typical denver to fort collins slog and well we're just pulling in so we're only a few minutes from the office so let's go see how zach and jordan did i mean excuse me zach and timon <laughs> great to have timon back on shoots he's been busy we have made it to foco and guess who we beat we beat the almighty Kyle Connor. Thank God that uh, the Rivian overheated. Yeah, he had some EV, he had some charging issues. I think we're both ready for bed. So we're just, yeah, I think he's about five miles behind us. So it's 1.35 in the morning. We yeah. left here at 8.30 yeah. yesterday. Almost 19 hours awake. 19 hours? I'm about 19 hours awake. Uh -oh. Kyle's just showing up. You can close that door. He's at the office. He's. I think he's at 
so much of a low state of charge that he's going to the charger. We have 38%, like this thing was super efficient on that last leg, 70 miles, 1.55 miles per kilowatt hour. Now granted, we did have a tailwind the whole way, which was nice. So I think I'm in a spot where I can basically park this thing and charge it up. So how long have you been here? Uh, five, 10 minutes. Oh, nice, not bad. We were only 10 miles out of you on the highway. Yeah, and I have 38%. We have 32. So we both could have just left way earlier. Yeah. <laughs>